Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the Security uh, Matters Hawaii episode. We're in the Think Tech Hawaii studios today, and it's back to school time. Uh, we call this episode Back to School Security 2019. We have a true school professional with us today. Kevin Wren is a school safety advocate from A3 Communications. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's uh, near the end of your work day down there, so I appreciate you hanging around. No, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, having the conversation on school security today. Right on. Yeah, we, well, you know, we've um, obviously there's there's a I think there's a growing concern across the country about this that I wish it got more traction a decade ago. But, uh, you know, I appreciate the work that you've done in this space. Um, for our audience who doesn't know you, uh, maybe uh, do you want to give share some of your background, how you sort of ended up in the, the spot that you're in today there at uh, A3? As much as you yeah, want to yeah, share, I'm, you know, we won't we won't start spamming you or give it all away. But no, absolutely. Uh, I've actually been doing safety, school safety and security since I was 15 years old as a wow. high school student. My uh, school resource officer back in Augusta, Georgia, uh, was a huge influence on my life, uh, was even in my wedding. Wow. Um, but he had me involved as a student uh, doing the school board, uh, doing uh, some stuff at the state level, just asking a student's perspective on school safety. And that was back in uh, 94, wow. way before Columbine even existed. Yeah. Uh, he did a mock uh, lockdown uh, drill with the sheriff's office with an active shooter, hostage situation. Wow. Uh, those are all unheard of uh, pre-Columbine. Pre sure. Um, so then uh, went to school, and uh, as soon as I got out of school, I, I became an SRO, kind of following his footsteps. and. Uh, was able to be in law enforcement for six years before helping uh, start the security emergency management department for Charleston County School District. Wow. And then uh, the last six years, I started the security emergency management department for Rock Hill School just south of Charlotte. Wow. And uh, been fortunate enough to have some, some pretty good success and uh, get to know some fantastic people through uh, being the director of the year for Campus Safety Magazine and uh, participating with Safe and Sound Schools as one of their advisors. And now having the pleasure of uh, being one of the steering committee directors for the Partner Alliance for Safer Schools. Awesome, awesome, yeah. And that was sort of the first touch point I got on on the sort of the programmatic side of the business. Talk, uh, tell for our audience here a um, little bit. Talk about that SRO program down there and how folks get in that. Sort of what some of their qualms are. Um, what what your advice may be if you're advising a school district or something to uh, engage with SROs on their K through 12 campuses. Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, National Association of School Resource Officers, or okay. NASRO, is, is the standard. Uh, they have a great program, uh, basic training, advanced uh, interview interrogation. They have all kinds of fantastic courses. They want to run a wonderful conference. Mo Kennedy and his people at NASRO are, are, are a fantastic organization. Uh, NASRO says that you should have one SRO per thousand students. Ah. So in South Carolina, uh, we've been fortunate enough, the majority of our, our middle and high schools have an, an SRO on campus, and those SROs work for the local police department or sheriff's office. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, a lot of school districts are starting to adopt uh, school security officers, or um, SSOs, as some people okay. call them, uh, which is a private armed security. They usually uh, function in the elementary schools um, as, a, you know, as a complete deterrent, whereas the school resource officer really follow the triad model of an educator, law enforcement educator, a counselor, and then uh, law enforcement. Oh, wow. So that counseling aspect, is that just so they, they have, can build relationships with the student body and student body learns to trust law enforcement and things like that? Absolutely, that's the whole purpose of yeah. an SRO. Um, if, if those SROs are not building, building authentic relationships with their students, the uh, school administration really has no use for them. Ah. Uh, we tell uh, we tell law enforcement all the time that if your investigations division is not getting more information out of your SRO than they are from uh, <laughs> some of your informants on the street, you may have the wrong SRO because the kids know everything. Yeah. It's just a matter of finding that right person to build those relationships. Um, so they start disclosing what's what's really taking place. Yeah, what an interesting role. How's the support from the law enforcement community for those SROs? Because it's that's kind of your front line out there. You know, it's a fairly dangerous job. I mean, in some cases. Absolutely. You know, anything security-wise in K-12 has has advanced dramatically over mm. over the past 10, 15 years that I've been around. Uh, there was a day that the SRO was. Uh, kind of the island of misfit toys, so to speak. 
Uh, they just kind of stuck to, you go babysit the kids. I see. Well, now they're realizing, hey, this is a big PR position. Uh, these guys can actually have an effect on uh, deterring crime and building those relationships. You're seeing a higher quality, higher caliber of officer that's becoming an SRO, becoming a, a career SRO. Uh, law enforcement has been very supportive of that. Um, I'm sure you're well aware that law enforcement has some unbelievable shortages right now. Yeah, and the trying to find enough enough officers to work the streets, um, where they may want to have an officer in every school. But the reality is, is that they just can't do it. They they can't find the manpower. They can't yeah. can't staff the positions, um, which is unfortunate because it, it is a, an unbelievable profession. Is um, are there restrictions? Like, can we get uh, veterans or retirees? Are there any sort of you know physical or age restrictions on those types of roles? So there there are, I think, for um, you know, to join like a police force, I'm sure there's maybe, I don't even know, I'm just guessing there's age limits and things like that, but for an SRO, could, is, would that be a little less, uh, or a little more relaxed maybe? Yeah, I don't think there's any, uh, I don't think there's any uh, age restrictions. I'm sure there's some physical liability yeah. abilities and those kind of things. Um, but, you know, if they can go through a hiring process at a, a local law enforcement agency and, and, and yeah, we're, we're, we're willing to have them. Happy to have them. That's awesome. Absolutely. Is um so and what's their mechanism for reporting upstream like uh, intelligence? Let's just call it that. You know, some you know I got this gang activity or a, is there a, a portal that they use that feeds like or is there district wide awareness that this school has this issue and that school or how's that uh, how's that infrastructure? Yeah, so it kind of depends. You know, there's different models across the country, uh, okay. different states. Uh, South Carolina, for instance. Uh, there is no authority for a school district to have its own police department. Okay. Uh, so, but like Georgia, North Carolina, several other states, you have school districts that have their own law enforcement departments. Oh, wow. Okay. So when you have law enforcement that reports to the school board uh, of education, then obviously the, those change, of, uh, the change of command are a little more direct in the educational role um, for communication. When you have that separation, uh, Sometimes communication can get muddied or, or, or blurred, or then you start getting into uh, different federal requirements of FERPA and uh, oh, yeah. and, and different things with, like that. But uh, overall, I mean, communication is everything. Communication when it comes to school safety is number one. You have to have uh, communication not only with law enforcement and school officials, but you also have to start looking at Department of Social Services, Department of Mental Health, mm. Department of Juvenile Justice and really start looking at the whole picture of, of that student to find out what's what his or her needs are and how we can uh, you know divert them away from any kind of criminal activities yeah from that escalation path right we talk about that is um uh is your feeling that's or let's just say said you know and take the last decade or so are are we having an effect are we getting more reporting from the kids from the families from the people that we know are more likely to see some indicators of, 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 of bad behavior or that you know things aren't going well for someone. And is that um, increasing with the level of you know um, security effort that we're making uh, on the campuses? Yeah, I, I think it is, I really do. Um, not good. only just the day and time that we live in and the kids are constantly being bombarded yeah. um, with, with things in the media, but uh, you know, the tech age that we live in now allows so many different platforms and ease of use to submit a tip, whether it's through text or, or, or whatnot, that the kids are way more likely to, to, to let people know. Whereas, you know, back in the day, it was pen and paper, drop a note in a, in a, in a box, and hopefully <laughs> somebody somebody uh, answered that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's uh, regardless of technology, it's all about those relationships. If those students don't feel the trust, if they don't feel that you honestly care about their well-being, then they're not going to care. Yeah. And um, we're, we're, we're seeing some improvements in that area. Yeah. I, I really believe we are. And again, the, those SROs are, are uh, a huge resource in making that happen. Yeah, that that um, that engagement, I, I don't think, I don't work in that environment, so I don't think about that. There's a privacy issue, I guess, with the kids and the reporting of their information and all that kind of stuff. Is there sort of like legal advice per state, per county, per city? Is that is it a difficult to, to go through or do you just sort of, is that engaged in the, like your basic SRO training package, they know what, what information you can share and not share about perhaps uh, some juvenile that you've, you know, engaged with or talked with? 
Yeah, you kind of have two sides of the coin. So you've got oh. the uh, juvenile justice rules and laws you got to follow okay. on the law enforcement side. And then that's part of that training you go through through NASRO ah. is uh, in, in a basic course of instruction, it goes over uh, FERPA and HIPAA and, and those different things that are the school kind of based laws and what you can share and who you can share with and, uh, you know, different things like that. Ah, yeah, sounds pretty involved. So interesting. Is um, and so what's give us a picture? You know, you, you uh, in your intro, you said you came from one district and then now you're into another one. What's the just number of schools, number of students, kind of that um, you, you have oversight on there? Uh, yeah. So I was in Charleston. We had 80 schools. Wow. Right around um, 65, 70 thousand students. Wow. And then um, in Rock Hill, I had uh, 20. I should, I should know this as I was going four months ago. Uh, Sorry. 29 <laughs> schools. 29 schools and uh, 17,800. Wow. Yeah, for my audience, you know, we're live, so we didn't we don't prep this up. We just talk stories. So he didn't expect that question. But anyway, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, no. So is uh so what um on this SRO thing, I want to get into pass a little bit after the break, but the um on this this sort of um pro I don't want to call it proliferation, but the um, administration of this SRO community, um, obviously some success with uh, engagement with the students. Is that a thing that we'll, we should invest in more and you think we'll see more investment in? Is there an appetite for the growth of that program? Yeah, I think there absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Mo can here, somebody over at NASRO to tell you a little bit more about the stats of things. But oh, yeah. Uh, no, a absolutely, that is a growing industry. But again, that, the hang-up is where are you going to find the officers? Yeah. Who's, who's volunteering to get into law enforcement right now? Yeah. Uh, I joined in 2000. I can't tell you honestly that I would sign up for law enforcement yeah. in this day and time with everything that's going on yeah. and, and the constant questioning and, and life safety issues for the officers. Yeah. Um, it, it's a tough world. Um, uh, more more props than I can imagine to those yeah. guys and girls that are signing up on a daily basis to yeah, take yeah. on that role. Yeah, the blue line. We love our law enforcement. Um, the uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. The um, 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 well, we'll skip that. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you got involved with with Pass with the folks at NSCA. Now, I, I knew when they were started to build that it must have been five or six years ago now but it's really matured quite a bit so what was your initial engagement with nsca because you were in law enforcement so how, did, how did you sort of find pass yeah so in 2014 uh, they came out with the first version and uh okay. i was able to get involved with them last year with version four okay and we are currently working on uh, version five so, so pass is, is, is a conglomeration of, of, of a multiple multiple disciplines. So you've got uh, NSCA, you've got SIA, you've got ASIS, you've got uh, Safe and Sound Schools, uh, which is Michelle Gage organization out of Newtown. You've got, uh, 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 sorry, it's slipping my mind right now, um, Secure Schools Alliance, uh, okay. Robert Boyd in that group. Awesome. Um, so door, uh, sorry. I should know these all off the top of my head, right? Uh, no, but I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know we had door security and safety uh, yeah. foundation. I didn't but know we had multiple, so many groups. Yeah, I really uh, yeah, didn't. Multiple organizations that are associated with it, and you know the manufacturing. The um, so I got involved with it right at, kind of back after I won Campus Safety uh, Magazine Director of the Year. Awesome. Um, and w was approached to those guys about joining. So at the time. Uh, Guy Grace from Littleton, Colorado is the chair of that. Yep. Guy and I had some conversations at a couple of different conferences. And so Guy and I were the two end users uh, that, that were on that. Uh, I jokingly told them that they brought me on board to, uh, to dumb it down some so that uh, it wasn't uh, over everybody's head. I don't I'm think so. still waiting for the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I've, I've heard Guy talk too. It's, um, they need that sort of insight and that passion that you guys bring from the end user perspective. I think it's, it shows in the depth of the document itself. Um, Kevin, we're going to take a, about a one minute break. We're going to pay a few bills and we'll be right back with Kevin Wren. Stick around. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just 
talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it. Even financial health, we'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. It's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed, and uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later, and aloha. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're talking with a true school security professional today, Kevin Wren from A3 Communications. And Kevin, now we were just getting into PASS a little bit, the Partner Alliance for Safer Schools. Um, I did not know so many groups were involved. I, I feel like sort of Chuck Wilson built it and everybody else must have jumped on. Is that a, is that a fair thing? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. And, uh, <laughs> And, and and guys' passion and, yeah. and uh, Chuck and Mark and it just it just kind of spiraled and uh, they keep getting bigger and better uh, every year. Yeah, uh, I, I, it's up to I think it's a ninety-five page document now, <laughs> um, and uh, and it's only going to get bigger as, as more and more technology comes on board and uh, start figuring out a better way, a safer way to protect our kids. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, not only is it just a large number of uh, organizations that are involved with PASS and the people who helped write it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's gotten a lot of headway with, uh, or a lot of traction, I should say. It's referenced in NFPA 3000 yep. with Asher, the Federal Commission on School Safety has referenced it. Uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas report recommends it, Ohio Schools, you know, security report recommends it. So it just kind of goes on and on. Wow. Uh, getting a lot more traction. Uh, I wish I knew how many downloads of the, of the past document we've had up, up to this point, but uh, our goal is that every administrator, especially anyone involved in school security, uh, architects, et cetera, are, are looking at that document as a reference source for, for where to start, where, where do we begin? Yeah, and uh, as you know, we've got all kinds of fire codes, but we've got no security codes. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it so palatable. And, and so let's talk about that a little bit. It was it was designed for the school that has no budget, and then the school that has a little budget, and then the school that has a larger budget, maybe. So you really can get engaged with uh, with this document at a very basic level to start protecting the students. And I don't think people know that. They think it's you know millions of dollars worth of electronic stuff, right? Right, absolutely, and, and no. The, the, the first thing that we say is policies, policies and procedures. That doesn't cost you any money. Yep. Uh, there's a ton of free resources. Pass is a free resource. Uh, I love you guys. Foundation, Safe and Sound Schools, uh, the the RIMS through the Department of Ed, all free resources. FEMA, all free resources. And, and we said, look, look at this smartly. Look at your policies and procedures, and then look at training your people. Hey, none of that costs a penny. Yep. We don't start looking at video cameras until like letter six. Yeah. You know, so it, it's not the, the first thing we're doing is going to uh, spending money. Yeah. Um, there, there's some smart processes out there, and uh, we, we just need to be thoughtful about what we're doing. Yeah, and I mean, to your earlier point about, you know, the engagement with the SROs, right? If the faculty, if the administration starts to engage students in these discussions about security, why we need it, you know, that, that consensus building can take a while before you start, you know, locking down doors or putting up metal detectors or whatever it may be, right? I mean, it's super valuable to have the buy-in of your, your clients when you're going to be doing security. I think we've all implemented security at a place where the people didn't want it, they thought we're invading their privacy, and just all these types of things. You know, those, those considerations are human, and they need to be addressed with students as much as uh, any population. Exactly. And, and you know, you, you get in a school security world, world you know, I get the kickback from the principals. I've heard it many a time. Well, you're not going to turn my school into a prison. You, <laughs> you're right, I'm not. We're, we're, we've got to find that balance between prison environment and open kumbaya, everybody goes everywhere. Right. There's a balance in there. And every community, every school is different and unique. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, the PASS guidelines basically says, if you have a dollar to spend for school safety and security, spend it here first, all the way through to, you have so much money, you don't know what to do with yourself. Here's some <laughs> all kinds of crazy analytics, right? Yeah. That you, you can uh, get into. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's filling that gap, right? Where, where there is no standards. And yeah. we all know that if you're gonna put a pool station at an exit door. It's in fire code, it mandates it. Yep. But should I buy security cameras first? Should I buy access control? Should I buy visitor management? Should I? But that's where the document comes in handy to say, hey, start here, work your way up, uh, make sure that we're being smart, make sure that we're not uh, becoming predators of some of these unscrupulous manufacturers out there that are preying on fear. Yeah. Uh, the door barricade companies, the bulletproof backpacks, uh, bulletproof, you name it, they're, they're calling it bulletproof and trying to sell it to a school district. Yeah. Um, I had somebody the other day tell me they were, they were approached and set to a meeting of six foot by six foot Kevlar curtain uh, for the smooth price of $8,000 per classroom. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I do not know who makes this stuff and I do not know what's in their brain, but... They, they, they think there's some money there that there's not. You know, the school districts are strapped. They've got a lot of things that they got to support. Security's, I think, finally come up and, and getting the attention that it needs across the nation. And, you know, some, some have more money than others, that's for sure. There's been some major grant programs, I think, that maybe NSCA was able to help get some money funded if you were using past guidelines along with an integrator who, to help you build a program out. Is that, um, is that something that you guys were able to do there? And I don't know if that's, a, if that's happened yet or if it was just still a discussion. Well, I think uh, there are grants out there. The school violence prevention grant um, okay. is out there. That will, uh, last year's uh, submittal should be awarded uh, by the end of this month. Awesome. Uh, I would imagine next year it will open up somewhere around January, February for a due date of somewhere in May. Um, but that's one of the things with, with any grant is they want they want those standards. Why? The why? Yeah. Why are you asking sure. for a half million dollars for this product or, or for, to implement ABC. Yeah. Well, that's where PASS comes in. PASS is, is standards. It's standardization. Where are you starting? Where are you going? So you're able to look at your buildings, your assess your buildings. You say, hey, we're at a tier one for cameras. We're at a tier two for access control. We want to get to tier three with everything. Here's how much it's going to cost. Here's, it, it helps you with your budget proposal. It helps you with the standardizations that uh, are going to be needed when you apply for competitive grant. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it's the uh, last version I was looking at, it was sort of, I think it was almost square footage based or something. Like you really could get an idea of from the size of your school or the student population, sort of what kind of budget you might require for to achieve, let's say, a, a level, a tier two with your with your access control system, for example. Has that, has that continued to evolve? Because I think now you're out to like the district layer, right, or something like that. I think with layer five or six. Yeah, so there's there's several different layers. So district-wide layer looking at, at policies, procedures, and standardization of systems. I think one of the biggest things in that district layer uh, that I've come into now that I've my role with A3 is school safety. I've been able to travel to southeast and see all these different states and schools and where they are. I'm seeing a lot of decentralization, meaning uh, mm. the school district has capital funds or general operating funds, and they're giving that money to the principals, and the principals are determining, hey, where to put a camera or I'm going to resurface the gym floor instead of buying access control. Ah. And I, I think I think that decentralization opens them up to, to some liabilities, especially when you have a principal down the street that says, hey, I'm going to spend all my money around safety and security. So sure. uh, the centralization and creating those standards on that district-wide approach. And then we look at the property layer, um, you know, sure your athletic facilities, your, your kind of your your, ex, your perimeter fencing, your your your, ex, your your outside perimeter area. Sure. Uh, before we then look at the parking lot, building, envelope, and uh, finally your your classroom layers. And then of course each layer is then tiered uh, according to several different categories: uh, policy, procedures, communications, video surveillance, access control, etc. Yeah, and these um, I know you mentioned uh, campus uh, security magazines. How you first met, I think uh, Gary. Um, is that, um, have you seen that, that I haven't attended those conferences, I think they do two a year now, and I haven't, is it Kevin, uh, um, uh, I said Ms. Hattersley and her group, but have they, um, yeah, have probably. you seen a lot more attendance in that? Is Are those gaining momentum? Are administrators showing up? Are school people funded to go to these types of events and learn? 
Yeah, so they do an east of Texas and a west okay. um, every year. And, uh, you know, the attendance, I think, is, is, overall is, is very good. Um, it can always be better, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the problem with any conference is, is time time for principals, time for superintendents, yeah. and, and, and competing interests. Um, school security is not the number one uh, priority for schools. Yeah. It's education. Yeah. Uh, school security sure. and safety is is a priority, but is not the priority. Yeah. And um, they need to be spending their time looking at, uh, you know, reading, writing, and uh, science, and, and how to better educate my child and your child. Mm -hmm. um, but in the same breath, they've got to be aware of the safety and security, and, and the, the pass as an organization can simplify things and make it easier for them uh, to create a plan, then that's why we're here. And, and, and that's why I'm here. Um, Brian Thomas, owner of A3, he approached me and he said, hey, Kevin, there's school districts and schools that just need help. I don't need you to sell anything. I just need you to go help. And I'm like, wow. Brian, I can do that. I wow. can do that. What an opportunity. That, that, I, I applaud that effort. That's a, that's a thing that's, you know, you, you mentioned how a lot of the, these, these schools, people with funds get blasted by, you know, oh, buy this technology or you need to do it this way. And I think, I think like you said, PASS has brought order to that. It's trustworthy. Um, it's freely available to school administrators and people that are concerned about this type of thing. So they ought to get engaged. And I, I applaud A3's efforts to go out there and help the schools because it's, it's a lot. And that does free them up to do the education bit. Um, you know, we've got minute, minute 15 left. Um, Want to share just your some closing thoughts with the with the people that are maybe watching this and for the first time going, wow, I need to do something. Um, you know, what, yeah. what would you advise them to do? Um, don't get hung up on fear. You know, uh, your your children are in the safest place they can be inside of a school building. Yeah. Uh, just remember that, and uh, you know, let's be thoughtful about what we're doing. Um, Active shooter seems to be what everybody on the media wants to talk about. That's yeah. the new hot topic. Um, there's way more to school safety and security than, than an active shooter. Yeah. Um, while while they're, they're traumatic, uh, we have to have a plan in place. Uh, there's other things out there, and those events are human nature, and as such are very complex, and you can't buy your way out of it. Uh, you've got to look at mental health. You've got to look at physical security. You've got to look at building relationships. That's awesome. Kevin, I really appreciate, appreciate you spending time with us here today. Um, your point about building those relationships, I mean, we need to build them at home. Students need to build them with other students. Our school administrators are there to help. Um, if you see something, folks out there, that bugs you, say something to somebody. Don't let your friends go down a rabbit hole. They don't need to go down. Kevin, I really appreciate you spending time with me today. Uh, hopefully, we'll get you back on the, on the next past version, and we'll update, we'll update the audience. Thanks for having, having me and uh, helping move the ball forward. Appreciate right. you. Take care. Aloha. Thank you.